one owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com, and this video is going to be about not depending on people, not relying on people, not having friends, not having employees, or the friends and employees that you have, keeping them at arm's length and keeping it in a way where you are the master of your domain, you're worried about what you're doing, and your mind power, brain power is put into your life and what you want to accomplish, and not hanging out and talking to a bunch of schmucks about nothing that matters. Fake friends, bad employees, botched business deals, and all kinds of stuff. I'm making it in a couple parts, so I don't know exactly how I'm going to clip it together, but I'll be a clipping. Friends, employees, business acquaintances, stuff like that. The one that brought this to light most recently is I had a deal work with a car dealership, uh, car dealer here in California, where I was going to put cars on his lot and we were going to sell said cars from his lot and do it to it. Dude, nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. I enjoy him. I hope we hang out more as friends in the future. But as far as the working together and stuff on things, it just didn't pan out. And by the end of it, I'm begging the guy to give me a call back and say, I'm sorry, man, I don't mean to bug you, but can I bring a hundred grand worth of inventory to your lot? And if somebody's interested in working and somebody's interested in doing something, they're going to get off their ass and do it. And no matter what, you can't make that person want to do it. It's just I tried too long trying to do that and kept buying more cars until I end up with a hundred grand retail worth of stuff. I, I don't need nobody to sell my cars. I already sink and stole half of them. But it's just a turnover thing and I could have made more. And I could have made more by making less by having him help me turn them over and moving them in a faster time and not wasting two or three months. So this video is about just being you, just a rant. It's a damn rant, that's what it is, about being you, making money, and just pumping towards that goal for all you're worth. You doing it, though. Nobody can do it for you. And when I'm looking for help and looking for people to work here, I'm not thinking they're going to make me the most successful person in the world. My life's going to change. No, I'm thinking I can have someone that can pick up some block and put them in a damn wheelbarrow over here that's knocked over and push them out to the corner to where I can put them in the truck and take them to the damn dump. I'm just looking for some help. If that person becomes the guru of stinking video editing and starts showing how he can do a detail like no other and can buff like Mercedes Lassa Buffuses or something, and then that guy's going to keep getting more money and more job and stuff. People just don't have the want to to even learn and step up in their life. I was sitting in Walmart today. This lady's sitting there complaining. <laughs> and to the lady that's working and not even talking or paying attention to me and the other customers and just sitting there complaining about that she wants to go home. Well, I want to go home too. Yeah, well, you know, think. Give me a break. It's actually the first time I've heard him complaining in Walmart. Most of the time they're happy. But whatever. If you're complaining, if you're not happy, you're not happy because you're not happy about what you're doing in your life. Not, it's not anything else. Go. Sitting around talking about politics at dinner for two hours every night, having drinks for three hours. It's not cool. It's not fun. It, it is fun. It doesn't get you anywhere in life, though, and it's not going to make you any money. No matter what, when you're in business for yourself, whether you're doing a landscaping business, whether you're building walls, or doing grass, or whether you're redoing cars, and doing car work, and mechanical work, and selling cars, or if you're working at McDonald's, no matter what, your entire success at what you're doing depends on one thing, and that's you. That's not your manager. It's not the person around. It's not somebody that works for you. It's not who you come home to at night or who you go out with and have fun or have drinks with at night. Those people and that stuff doesn't matter to you being successful. You being successful is how you get out of bed in the morning, how you think about things, how you manage your time, and busting your damn ass all day long. That's what makes you money and makes you successful. Everything else is secondary and it's not important and needs to take a real back seat. You can't hang out with friends five nights a week for two, three, four, five hours and expect to get anywhere in your business when you're not sitting around at night planning on what you're going to do the next day and strategizing. You know what I mean? You got to plan things out. You got to have that long vision, have goals, and you're not going to get them by hanging out with a bunch of people who don't have the same goals as you. And no matter what, when you're around people and you start to get successful with something, those people will hold you back. They will guarantee hold you back, no matter what, no matter what their good intent is. You got a friend and you guys are doing stuff and you lose 20 pounds? That friend ain't going to be, oh, you're too skinny. Oh, goodness. Oh, you got to stop. You're just too skinny. You might want to lose 10 more pounds and get in better shape and start working out and gain some muscle. But that person's going to say you're too fitty. Blah, blah, blah. That person's going to say you're too damn skinny because they don't want to get their fat ass off the couch and go work out and try to not eat, shovel food into their face. No matter what, 
worry about what people's intentions are, worry about what they're thinking behind the scenes, and worry about what their motives are really doing. What are they really doing for your life? What are they contributing and what are they making to put you more successful? I try to make lots of people more successful. When I have employees work for me, friends come around, I give them opportunity, I give them chance, I try to give them a price on a car where they can make 1500 bucks. I try to really, really get in there, I give them all my products at straight wholesale. I give them free cleanses for them to try, I give them free marshmallows, I give them everything. I try and give them a way to make money. Then marshmallows, man, you get $100 per account that you get per stinking month. This stuff's just big time. So there's lots of ways to get money. And I try to lift up those and kind of help those out around me. I'm also looking for help when I'm trying to get employees. And I've found it's just not something that really works. Whether it's somebody who you're going to like do business with or somebody you're going to be friends with. Remember, what you do at night, where you go to sleep, how you think about things, and what you do at that time after you're done working. That's where it really is. That's where the success is. You're not going to make it by just working. You've got to plan it out and be good during the day and have it all lined out, have everything set up, make some phone calls at night, get more jobs to where when you're done with the job you have, you can get more or whatever the case may be. Does it ever seem that no matter what you do and no matter how hard you're trying, everything just seems to smack you in the face or something? Does it seem no matter who you're hanging out with or who you're doing something with, it just isn't making you any progress on your life and making you any money and you're just kind of in a rut with that person or something or is everybody you deal with just like woo ha and like you're, you're successful because of them that's not a very likely scenario the people that I meet and the people that I work with and the people that I do things with I'm not successful because of them I, I, I can't actually get anybody to do anything that's worth a shit so with that in mind it's a little hard to put the credit on anything when you can't get good help. Actually, I just had a deal where I put all kinds of time into making a partnership type deal with a California dealer here in the state. Great guy. I met him. We went and had dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it, and drinks. Hung out for five, six hours, drove around Silver Lake, LA, all kinds of places, Hollywood. Yeehaw, great times, great guy. Started talking about bringing up a bunch of inventory and putting on his lot because he had an empty lot. What a deal for him. What a deal for me. I got inventory. He got lot space. He could sell here. Boom. Man, I started next week or so. We talked a few times. Man, it's on. We're doing it, we said. So I went and I bought $65,000 worth of cars. $65,000 worth of cars. New stuff to put on his lot. Over the next two and a half to three months, I really, really, really tried and called two times a week, sometimes three, messaged, texted, acted like I was 11 and did the text thing, you know, and everything I could to try and make it work out. It didn't work out. And by the time we were to the end of trying to make it work out, I'm just thinking, and all the time I'm apologizing. Dude, I'm a sorry man. I, I don't mean to bug you and stuff, but what do you think? When can we get something up to your place? Let's do this. I've got a bunch of stuff. Hey man. You know, dude, I don't mean to bug you. Oh, you're not bugging me, man. You're not bugging me. Nice guy. I like the guy. I think we'd make good friends. I think we'd make good business partners or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, why am I chasing him? Why am I chasing somebody down to give him a hundred grand retail worth of product? Why would I do that? I shouldn't be chasing him. He contacted me asking me how to be a dealer, how to do things, how to learn the business a little bit better and all this stuff. Maybe he just wanted to bleed me for information and that kind of thing. And I'm a friendly guy and I just give it freely. The last thing, you know, I tried to go to the auction with him. Hey, man, let's go to the auction. Finally, about two and a half months into it, he wants to go to the auction. So we go to the auction. We make plans to pick up my car. I was going to go pick up the car on Sunday. But he wanted to go on Wednesday. So I'm like, dude, I'll wait around till Wednesday and see me and do some work. And then I'll just go pick you up and we'll go to the auction. Well, we go to the auction. We get there and I'm supposed to pick my car up. It's the last day I can pick it up and it's getting impounded. We go and we go around and we look at stuff and I had a big list. I think he had two or three cars he's looking at. And by the time he gets into it, I like a Volvo. And it's a nice little red Volvo. And he's like, whoa, he says, why would you buy that? Oh, that's junk, this, that, and the other. I'm like, no, man, that's cool. It's a cult classic, that's awesome. He's like, nobody wants that. Oh man, all kinds of people want that. At the end of the day, he ends up buying the Volvo. Like a four or $500 car or something, cheap ass car. Well, great, awesome, awesome. But guess what? Even though I offered to take and go back and take his car back and come back and get my car, maybe we could go boom, boom. No, he just wanted to take his and 
you know, we just leave. So I'm basically stuck with the other one on my shoulders and they impounded it. Cost me 400 something dollars. Never hear from him again. And that's good. I don't have nothing against the guy and I still don't, but I put myself on the line and I'm sick of putting myself on the line for people and having those people fall through. I don't need somebody to sell my cars for me. I can sell them my damn self. I would have just bought a different kind of cars. No matter what, when you put yourself on the line, you put yourself at risk of having to do the work yourself. And as long as you know that from the get-go and you don't depend on these people for anything, it should be okay. No matter if it's a business association, a friend, an employee, family, whoever it may be. If that's the way it's going in all the situations, the situations just need to get thinned down. There's no way a person can work like that. There's no way a person can live like that and have everybody just falling through, falling through, falling through. I really wish that deal would have worked on that car deal, car deal. Um, I think it would have been amazing. And if there's any other car dealers in, in California, LA or San Diego, that would like to work something out like that, let me know because I'm, I've got a lot of inventory. I ship it all the state out of the country. And I think that we could make a very lucrative deal for both of us because I got a lot of inventory sitting around. And it's not for sale until it's gone. So with you having it for sale, it'd be different. So I threw this in there along with the thing be with employees and friends and Chuck and all the different people that have been employees and all this stuff. What do you really need in life? Who do you really need in life? Maybe family, friends. That's where you should probably draw the line. Friends is a whole different issue and I hear it over and over and over again. Employees, employees, that's where you should probably draw the line. Who do you really, really need in life? Sure, you need employees, but the problems that come along with a lot of it and the problems that come along with friends and different things, it's easy to be friendly, but it ain't something you wanna go hang out every freaking night and get drunk and go to the bar for four hours and waste your whole life away trying to be friendly and know a bunch of people. And I hear it from kids, young kids, and I hear it from on my channel, um, in calls, when I'm on calls, people I know and meet in daily life. Oh, life, <laughs> mess that up. Oh, I don't have any friends. Or, oh, I don't have anybody to hang out with. I have me to hang out with. And I'm a very, very cool cat. I got all kinds of things I can do. I got a doggy over there, Roxy, to hang out with. I got a little doggy upstairs called Breeder to hang out with. And then dogs are cool. Your dog loves you. Somebody else and what they're going to do for you or what they're going to come through and all that, that's a whole different story. And it usually isn't going to work out the way you want it to. That's all there is to say about it. Friends, I'm 42 years old, going to be 43 here in a week. That's getting old. And when you think about it, all the people I knew in high school, I know and talk to one of them. Just one. That's it. I didn't have anything in common with those people. I didn't ever want to hang out with those people. I didn't want to be friends with those people. I was put in that situation and that's the only people that were around. So I befriended people because when you're in that kind of a setting, you're going to hang out with somebody. You're going to do something, but you really don't need that kind of drag on your life. Sure, you need people to talk to, acquaintances and friends, if you will, that you can do something with every once in a while. But the running around like a wild pack of dogs all night, every night of the week and stuff like that should be over by the time you're like 10 years old. I mean, it's just, it's, it's childish, it's a waste of time, and them kind of people are a drag on your life. That clicks into employees for me, because I have a situation where I've hired a lot of people from out of the state, from out of the country even, and they get here, and they stay at my place, and they do this, and they have free room and board, and I buy a lot of meals and breakfasts and lunches when we go out and all this stuff. So everything's just kind of there, and all the needs are taken care of, and hey, they really don't have to do that much work. And it really doesn't matter if something gets done to them, because they don't have any bills, they don't have any stress, they don't have any pressures, nothing is on their minds and worrying about anything. Everybody is a friend when they need something, and nobody is a friend when they don't need anything. I've had very, very specific instances of this in my life. Recently, um, last week, last month, last year, um, Chuck, Chuck, my best friend, you know, he's a good guy. And I know what I'm dealing with all three of the times when he came down here. Dude had a problems. That's, I got him in the truck, we look, took off, hit the road. That's all there was to say about it. Like he said in the videos, he's supposed to be in rehab. His sister's gonna go drop him off. I grabbed him and brought him to San Diego to work. Get to work, man. You know, rehab, you need to get your ass to work every day is what you need to do. We did good. We got going, boom -a boom A month and a half later, he went back, never seen him again for a year. 
when people have problems and stuff, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to be their friend, and I'm still going to be on their side, but however much I support that or want to hang out with that person, it's going to be greatly diminished by that, no matter what. Um, with that specific situation, you know, you got a friend that's got a problem like that. Um, I need the help, and he's good help. So I went got him back down here a year later, and I had to bargain with the king to let his kids come. And that cost me money for them all to go out and do stuff and give extra money and give extra money. But first time he took a Mercedes Benz back, or maybe it's the first time. First time he took a Mercedes back. And second time he took a radiator back for it after he wrecked it. Owed me money on that. Owed me money on this. Owed me money on the vacation for us. Oh, it'd be so nice to have a vacation for my kids in LA and you could show us things. And yeah, I made videos of going out even and having fun and woo ha and stuff. And just fun time on Nate. And I really didn't get enough work done. That third time, we got a little more work done, but it just costs me so much to be connected to people like that. You've seen the guy that ripped the window out I didn't want out in my apartments maybe and all the apartment work I've been doing. This is a, dude was a schmuck. He was a schmuck. And then you see that guy was helping me on the wall and stuff. He's a schmuck. It's just not going to be the kind of people that I want to be around. And I'm sick of doing the kind of videos I do, needing help to do it, and having helpers that just aren't worth a crap to help me. That's all there is to say about it. There's no way to get around it. There's no way to actually have a good right-hand man anymore. And because everybody who's a good right-hand man, and everybody who's good at what they're doing, they have a damn job. They're already working. So I am looking for someone. That's a totally separate little thing, a totally separate video type of thing. But I keep hearing this stuff from people about, oh, I don't know what I can do in life because I don't have anybody to hang out with. Make some plans. Start a business. Knit some socks, for fuck's sake. Make something you can sell on Amazon or um, whatever the little Etsy or whatever, you know. eBay, get, get out there. Do something. Do what's important to you. Have some fun doing it. And I bring this up again because I'm hearing other people, whether they be on my channel and whether they be on the people I meet and anything else. Everybody wants to do YouTube videos, and it seems like it's an easy thing, and oh yeah, you're getting all kinds of hits from YouTube. I really don't get that many hits. My big income is not YouTube income. My bigger income comes when I sell a car by making the video on YouTube, and selling my products and wares on YouTube is a great way to make extra income and stuff, or even make it be your main job. Just jumping up and making some videos on YouTube is not going to get you all kinds of hits, and you're not going to be internet famous in like a month or two. There's rare cases where some people get a lot of hits, a lot of subscribers really fast and make it big. I've heard people quitting their jobs because they're going to be a YouTube star. I'm going to change this. I'm going to be a YouTube star because I hear somebody made some money on it. It doesn't work like that. It's not that easy. And no matter what you do in life, you've got to work at it. Everything is a job. I've got about a dozen jobs. And a block layer. I'm a yard yard remaker. I'm gonna walk around and show you a little bit of stuff here. Um, I've been working on all this, and you can look on my channel. All this stuff is on the channel. Roxy, what are you doing? Roxy's on the channel, and there's a video where Roxy beat up my dog. And we had to take her to the vet. Um, planter walls, did all them. Woo ha! Looking good. Planter wall, edge wall over there. Woo, buddy. Yeah, doing all that. Vinyl fence. Vinyl fence is all done. Boom. There was a big old thing in here with a pool, and it came all the way out to here. And it's a big old ugly thing with rats and all kinds of crap in it. Tore all that out. I've got bobcat videos and stuff you can watch on my channel. I've got all the posts in for the awning and all this stuff is just going on. Um, new Dodge pickup. And it's a nice little Dodge pickup. The Fiat is sold. Actually, I've got a guy wanting to come pick that up in an hour. And I need to go back here, get my video, and make sure that I'm all okay to get this out of here in an hour. So what I'm making a video about here is just be you. Do something. Don't, don't depend on somebody else, whether it be an employee, whether it be a worker, uh, employee, or whether it be a um, friend, whether it's family, try not to depend on anybody else because usually it just isn't going to work out correctly. It's always a pain in the arse and it always takes just a little bit more to get it going than what you would think it would take. Um, so I'm walking out here to show some other cars and I will maybe hit that up and... Z hey, are they coming to pick up this Fiat? I, I'm making a video. I want it picked up if they can, and I'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay, but So that car is getting picked up, and I wanted to show you this car. Just for the heck of it. Nice car. Let me get a mirror for it. That's about all I need besides the battery. I got the couple things on the coolant and stuff fixed. I do lots of cars on eBay, and that creates a need for a lot of employees, workers, and such 
and it creates a, a constant influx and outflux of people that just don't do a very good job. It's got 106 on it, it's a nice car, a couple little problems like a broken piece on the bumper. Um, I might just register that and drive it. This is for sale actually. Um, just give me a call if you're interested in that one. RT, the RT Magnum. And in the middle of this here video, I'm doing a walk around of some cars, just to do a walk around of some cars. Beautiful car, 122 on it, probably 123 now. I've been driving it around quite a bit. Motor mount was broken on this and I'm getting it repaired here. I just got the motor mount from Dodge because there's a couple different ones and they gave us the wrong one. In fact, I'm gonna show you the motor mount, kinda cool. So it was a don't depend on anybody and don't put all your faith in anybody. And I wanted to make a, a special little uh, thing about that where people have been watching and maybe have questions. That's an interesting motor mount. The other one had bolts coming out the bottom. This one we needed that piece for. I'm thinking the mount connects to that piece on the top and then that goes through that. I'm, I don't know. Don't know. Okay, so that's the Magnum with the SRT wheels cheap I'll make you a deal the i30 you want it get it out of here I'll make you a cheap cheap deal um, leather interior cold AC all the floor mats are in the back I didn't put them down yet I cleaned them and such but I didn't lay them down it's a nice car okay so yeah, well, I'm gonna start this because they're gonna pick up that Fiat and actually awesome it still starts and it's been sitting here for month and a half so I wondered and this car is heading out Fiat is a 500 it's a actual electric car very cool little car I'm gonna show you inside of it with the stitching and the stripes it's very nice Roxy get up here where do you think you're going okay so that's that um, I'll show you the truck too so with these people that you've seen around whether it be James um, Josh Chuck, Ruben, Rick, Robert. It's just the ones I can, Nick, it's the ones I can think of offhand. No matter who it is, I know what I'm dealing with. And when Chuck came down and Chuck was working, I know it's not gonna be a long-term thing. I know it's not gonna be something I can actually depend on. And when he leaves and says, yeah, bro, I'll be back, man, I promise. And when he says, yeah, bro, I promise this time, I swear, man, I wouldn't take advantage of you. You gave me and my kids a great vacation and stuff. No, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe these people because I've had a life of track record with him and no, his word ain't worth the, the sound you hear or whatever the hell you'd say. His word ain't worth crap. So, but he's a good guy. Besides the fact you can't rely on him. Besides the fact he'll fill you up with shit and just kind of bullshit you. Blow smoke up your butt, you know. And that's the thing with most people. They don't really want to come through for you. It's just if it's going to be for them. If they have to actually do much and have a job, a lot of them aren't going to want to do it. So no matter who it is, don't rely on them. Rely on you. And I've got a problem right now where I relied on a business that was set up where I had a couple good people. Um, when I had the bigger lot, I had Matt and Samantha and me. And I had another guy working bread. And I had, oh God, it was Chris at the office. So I had four good people. And we ran it for a while. Matt worked for me for nine years. And relying on that setup and relying like it was, Matt went out and played softball and had a heart attack playing softball. Um, great guy. Um, he's a good kid. I like Matt. He's not a kid no more. This guy's probably 34 years old or something. But didn't work here no more now. From that point on, and his buddy, Trent, was working. And he kind of went into the way of drugs. And that from that point on, I just started closing down stuff. And I don't have a reliable system no more. I don't have good help. And it's created a glut of problems for me on the cars that I do have. Now, I've got to keep buying cars like this, cars like that, cars like whatever you've seen, just to put the cars up and have the inventory and sell newer cars. But at the same time, I've got all these older cars sitting around that I'm just going to have to, I'm really going to start just throwing a lot of them away. I mean, just scrapping them for like pennies and just tearing some parts off of them. So, whatever, it's a big video about all kinds of stuff. I've filmed something at the end here to put at the beginning and la da 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 So that's kind of what it's about. Be positive. Get out and do something and don't rely on others. Rely on you, rely on what you can do for yourself. If you're looking out to go something and go out that night and have fun or go out that day and do something, don't, don't, don't think about it like that. Think about what you can do to make you better and how you can make some money. Making money is a hobby that'll definitely 
make you friends, <laughs> and making money is something that's definitely going to make you better, and you can save money to make money. There's all kinds of ways that you can do things and actually just go out and find something to do that requires nobody but you, your mind, and you'll have a great time. You'll meet people doing it. You can meet people everywhere. Just talk and say hello. It's a numbers game. Do it to it. Don't rely on no one. Have a great day or night, whatever it is, wherever you are. I know I talk with my hands a lot, it seems, but that's just what I do. Thanks for watching. OneOwnerCarGuy.com, BeaglesPocket.com for your little pocket beagles. And that's that. We'll talk to you. Have a great day or night. Subscribe! I do daily videos.